Hello world, this is Twani Price, host of Abroad Drinking Wine Podcast, where we discuss the ultimate life abroad, living like a local, working on my U.S. wine business, Zuri Wine Tasting from Cape Town, and helping locals start businesses of their own. All this while drinking wine in a foreign country. Hello world, welcome to Abroad Drinking Wine. This is Twani Price and on today's show we have the wonderful Larry Boone who actually imports wine from South Africa, Spain and Italy. We'll talk to him about the wines that he's bringing into the United States. We have my wonderful, the fabulous Beverly Watson, my mother. She's on the show and she talks to us a little bit about how she feels about the transition to South Africa. And then lastly, but not least, of course, we have my uncle, Bishop Tom Watson, who says just a little prayer for me and a send off to me to South Africa. Super excited about today's show. Let's get started. So what am I drinking today? Wow, I am drinking a really great red wine blend. It's the Kirkland brand from Costco's. Retails for about $12 a bottle. This is a delicious red wine. There's more earth than fruit. Understated, barely ripe fruit. A bit of forest floor, chewy texture with a smooth finish. Prominent tannins. Again, it's about $12 a bottle. It's a Bordeaux style blend. Mostly Merlot, 24% Cabernet. 4% Petite Bordeaux, 3% Cabernet Franc, and 2% Malbec. Hi, everyone. This is Twani Price and um, uh, Abroad Drinking Wine. I am here with my wonderful, my amazing mother, Miss Beverly Watson. Um, I like to call her mom. Other people like to call her Mama Bev. Welcome to the show, Mama Bev. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Try not to be too shy, Mom. It's just the um, internet and hopefully everybody in the world, right? Yes. All right. So I wanted to have you on the show because I just wanted to talk to you about the move to South Africa. You know, I leave in three weeks. It's coming up. Yeah. The move that I'm not really looking forward to happening, but that's what you do. That's what you do. So tell me a little bit how you feel about the move. Like just what's generally your what's your thought process well my thoughts about the move is i'm really not happy about the move because of the distance of the move that we're so close we've already been always been a really close family and having you that far just doesn't feel good to me i can't reach out and touch it's not a three hour or six hour flight to get to you or you to get to me so that's concerning to me and then um I've been experiencing some of the fallout of your move out with your son. And I think we both have some emotional ties that are difficult for us to let go. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but, you know, we'll be OK. Yeah, we'll be OK. <laughs> so what do you feel about like this whole travel bug that I have? Or how do you feel about traveling? Well, the travel bug that you have is absolutely amazing. I wish that. I had that much energy when I was younger. Well, maybe I had that much energy, but I wasn't that curious about the rest of the world. So I'm glad to see that you're doing that. I like that. I like that you're, you know, you're adventurous and you don't mind doing it by yourself because, you know, I would never go anywhere by myself. <laughs> so you going somewhere by yourself and traveling all the world. I'm, I'm concerned sometimes because you're overly friendly sometimes. And, uh, you know, we used to tease you and say you were going to be that movie Taken. Yeah, so. that's my, that's, so that's my nickname. My nickname is Taken because I'm like the person in the airport that's like, oh, yeah, we're staying here. Come over for dinner. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think I'm pretty, I have good intuition now. So I think that's, and I think that people are a lot better around the world than we expect. People may be a lot better around the world than we expect, but still there's that uh, that element of securing yourself or being safe and not being so over-friendly with everybody. And that's what worries me about you. I get that. I, I promise you I will be um, a little bit more cautious than I've been in the past. I just won't. We'll see. Because <laughs> I don't have any ransom money, so <laughs> you'll be stuck. <laughs> you'll just have to get on a plane and come save me. I'll face the one else. Like Steven Stigal. Yeah, right. Um, so what about your travel life? So can you talk to me a little bit about your travel life? Like where do you where, where do you like to go or where's a place on the earth that you'd like to visit? 
Um, well, you know, I'm not a real traveler. You know, I'm, I'm okay with right where I'm at. I'm okay with going close. I'll go, uh, you know, with my family being in Texas now, I like to travel to Texas and see them. Um, I've some, seen some parts of the U.S. and there are other parts of the U.S. I'd like to see. I'm really not interested in going to any of the foreign countries. So just around America would be great for me. Okay. Okay, so I have some cozy corner questions for you, Mom. All right, are you ready for these questions? Probably not, but let's have them. Okay, let's try to keep them clean. All right, are you ready? Let's go. So the first question is, when I drink, I get... And you're supposed to answer for yourself, not for me. Okay, because when I drink, I get... Uh, I probably get over-friendly. Okay, and how many drinks does it take? Let's just tell, like, half you a drink. You want me to tell everybody half my drinking habits? Uh, <laughs> no, I could drink... Uh, strong liquor, I could do pretty good. I could do two or three drinks of a strong liquor. It's uh, wines and champagnes, a glass or two, and I'm, I'm feeling a little bit comfortable. I feel a little loopy. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite person to drink with is? My favorite person to drink with, since I don't drink a lot, I really don't have a favorite person to drink with, but I have a group of people that I like to drink with. We had this book club of for about 15 years of girls and we all hung out and we all would have a book club meeting once a month and we do a lot of cooking and a lot of drinking so that group is the group that I like to hang out with and drink with the book club girls that's what I based my very first wine club after so when I first started my business before I started my business when I first started to learn about wine um I thought about how can I learn about wine more? And my mom had a book club. And so I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to start a wine club, kind of like her book club. And instead of reading a book, we'll get together and explore a wine a month. So, yeah. Thank you for the book club. I love the, what was it called? The Soul Sisters Book Club? No, absolutely not. Sisters Reading Books. (laughs) Oh, Sisters Sisters Reading Books. Yeah. They They are all so fabulous. So shout out to the Sisters Reading Books Book Club. Um, you guys helped me get started in this wine life. All right, next question. The best wine I ever tasted was? You know you don't want me to say the best wine I ever tasted. I do want you to say this. Tell me the best wine you ever tasted, Mom, please. Okay, there was Tell a, the world. Okay, the best wine I probably ever tasted was a Riesling. I can't remember what it was. It wasn't too sweet. It wasn't too dry. It was a really good Riesling. Oh, no, this is this Riesling. She always sends me out the gift. She's like, it's in a blue bottle and it's skinny and it's, it's it has none in it. So I don't know what it is. But she doesn't remember the name But of it. Uh, the drink that I really like to drink if I'm going to drink, um, if I drink like a sparkling wine, it would be Wycliffe Champagne, you know, the cheap one that they serve at the restaurants. I mean, <laughs> and my other one would be Barefoot. I like Barefoot wine. Twani has a problem with that, but I really like Barefoot. I don't have a problem with it. I just say that she's easily pleased. Like people say they want to stop and get some wine from my mom when they come over and they're like, what should I get? And I'm like, go get the Barefoot Moscato. And they're like, Twani, I can't bring that to your mom's house as a gift. You know, she's cooking this amazing. That's what she likes. But she doesn't like the Moscato. Though, so. It's the it's the sparkling Moscato. They only make one sparkling mom, and it's Moscato. Barefoot? Yes. No, they don't. Okay, we'll check that out. Okay. okay. Barefoot, can you just send her a bottle, please? Um, <laughs> given the opportunity, I would travel blank. And the rest of the question is for why, but since you're not really a wine person, where in the world would you travel? Where in the world would you travel for me? That's a good question. Like, how far would you travel for me? Um, as far as I would travel for you in Mexico. Mexico? You would go <laughs> You would go to Mexico? Yeah. Okay. So she'd go to our neighbors. That's fine. Exactly. I'd go That's to Canada. Good. I'd go to Mexico. But I, I tell you, I'm not interested in going. I'm not interested in any long flights. I'm not interested in spending 12 hours on a plane. That's just not what I want to do. I get it. Uh, where I always wanted to go when I was younger was uh, to M- Monaco. Monaco, where they have the casinos. Yes, that's what I wanted to do when I was younger, but I've gotten over that, so no big deal. I think you would love Monaco. I see you in Monaco, for sure. If you could give the world a gift, it would be? If I could give the world a gift, I'd give the world a gift of housing for some of the homeless people. Only some of them? Well, I couldn't give the... Couldn't it's a mom. gift. You can give okay. it. You can give them okay, all. Okay, well, if I could give them all a gift, I'd give it to the homeless people. I'd give them some housing, in particular the ones with small children, 
because children are our future and watching them live on the street and just doing all the things that they have to do to survive. I'd like to help the homeless population. Oh, thank you. I think you've done your part because you've helped me. I've stayed with you for a couple months now. So thank you. Yeah, for but continuing. you're not a real homeless, so that doesn't count. <laughs> no. But that's a wonderful gift to give the world. All right. Well, that's it. Oh, wait. I do have one question for you because this is my new favorite quote. Um, and I heard it on a podcast that I was listening to. And they said basically that what keeps them going is they do it for the people that believe in them. And I feel like there's so many people who believe in me. Of course, you're one of them and you keep me going. So sometimes when I want to stop, I just do it for people like you and Tyler and RJ who believe in me. Who are some of the people that believe in you that you continue to just continue to just do it for? Um, I probably have to say that it's my kids that uh, that continue to motivate me and to do what I do. Well, you know, my nickname is work because I like to work and, you know, I'm at my retirement age, but I'm not looking forward to retiring. And I just want to continue to work. And I just think, you know, my kids motivate me to work. My kids, my grandkids, my little Enzo motivates me a lot to do a lot of things that I do. So Her three and her three. She has three grandkids, not just Enzo. Okay. I have three, <laughs> I have three children and I have three grandchildren. But Enzo's the youngest, so he's the most vulnerable right now. So he is... He is a little light in my world right now to make sure that things are going to go right for him and things are happening right for him. That's my motivation right there. Oh, to keep that's so sweet. Going. We love Enzo. Yay, Team Enzo. Well, thank you so much, Mom, for having me. Is there any last words or anything that you'd like to say about my trip to South Africa? Any well wishes? Um, I could build you a little place in L.A. that looks like South Africa if you stay here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's all. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I love you, Mom. Love you, too. I'm speaking to Larry Boone. And can you just tell us the name of your company and just tell us exactly what you do? Because I don't want to I don't want to screw it up. I know that you (laughs) import wine from all over the world. And I'm super excited about that part, especially now that you're importing from South Africa. Okay. My name is Larry Boone. Uh, I own Lawrence Boone Selections. And right now we import wines. Uh, we started just importing wines from Spain. And slowly that's uh, evolved into now we'll be importing wines from France, uh, through Italy, and now South Africa. Uh, we started off as just the importer, but slowly started distributing wines ourselves just because we were having issues finding people to distribute our wines, so we took it upon ourselves to do it ourselves. That's pretty amazing. And where are you based out of? For some reason, I don't know why <laughs> I'm always thinking you're in Chicago, but you're not. You're on the East Coast, right? I'm on the East Coast. Uh, I'm from Virginia. I moved to Delaware for work. Uh, I'm like 30 minutes south of Philadelphia, and right now we do the bulk of our work in uh, D.C. You know what? I think it's probably because you always dress so well. Like the last couple times I've seen you, (laughs) you've just been like dressed, like just dressed. And so maybe that's why I thought you had a Chicago flair. You know, they know how to dress in Chicago, but I guess they know how to dress in D.C. too. So that's probably what it is. (laughs) How you doing? I am, you know, I am doing great. I am doing amazingly well. I'm preparing for my move to South Africa, so I'm super excited about that. Oh, that's when, when is that, December? Yeah, December the 3rd. Ooh, can't yes. wait. I cannot, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get back there and drink some of that good old South African wine. And that's why I wanted to have you early on on the show. I definitely planned on having you on my show, but I definitely wanted to have you like in the first few shows just because I'm super excited about your new relationship with South African wines. I feel like it's a really um, under-recognized market. So I'm glad that you're bringing really good wines from South Africa to the United States. I can't wait. I can't wait to get those guys' wines over here. I know. Some of them are my favorite, like my homies, my homegirls, <laughs> like my aces, like men. So I am like, 
I'm like your biggest cheerleader here in the United States and in South Africa. So, but let's get back to you. Let's not talk about me in South Africa because I promise you I could talk about that all day long. But it's so it's so it's so weird that um not weird, but it's just it's it's a lot because like Americans, we pretty much like local, regular old Americans, we stick to American wine. So for you to like step outside the box and to import wines from different areas in the world, that's pretty unique. I think it's pretty awesome and it's pretty unique. What made you say, you know what, I don't even want to deal with the wines from the United States. I want to go outside the United States. Uh, it's probably because that's where I fell in love with wine. Uh, I was never a big wine drinker, uh, but I took a trip. Matter of fact, it was just a day trip. I used to go over to England uh, once or twice a year just because I was a big soccer fan and one of the guys I went over there had a, he said he could get two plane tickets down to Barcelona and asked if I was interested to go, so I went. And like I said, at that point in time, I was a big, big craft beer drinker. The craft beer scene had just sparked in, in, in the United States. So we went down to uh, Spain, and it was the first time that I had a wine that I was like, wow, what is this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I I think that's what it was. So when I got back home, I just wanted to learn more about wine, and and I looked for the. I thought I was looking for the wine that I had drank in in Spain, but obviously it wasn't it. But I couldn't find it, so I started tossing around the idea of maybe I could start getting some of these because I started reading up on Spain too, and I knew that it was uh, they had quality wines that were very undervalued for uh the yeah. quality that they that they represent. So I mean the that table wine me that you get the table wine that you get at a restaurant is delicious usually when you're in Spain. You know, like the regular old just like give me the house wine. The house wine is is, is pretty good. In yes, Spain. It is. Yeah. So I so that's I how I got in. Uh that's how I got hooked in, into like I said, that's how I got hooked into Spain. And at that point in time, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do in wine, but so at that point in time, you didn't even have a wine business. Like you didn't have, you weren't even in the business whatsoever. I didn't even know anything about wine at that point in time. (laughs) Wow! So this is literally from the ground up. This is like literally, like Drake said, started with nothing. Now I'm here. Yeah. So when I got when I got back, I wanted to uh, to learn about wine, but real world situations tend to uh, <laughs> force your hand. And when I got back from uh, Spain, I think it was that following month, because uh, I work in the oil industry. They shut down the oil refinery I was working in in Virginia. So I moved to Indiana for a year. And once I could get back to the East Coast, I moved to Delaware. And once I got set up in Delaware, that's when I I knew, like I said, I was interested in wine before the interruptions. But that's when I was able to get in some classes and really start learning about this thing called wine because before then I had no clue. I love it. You know what? I feel like that's the best thing about wine too because it's like you can go to class, you can go to school to be an engineer, but going to school for wine is the best because you get to drink wine and study, (laughs) drink wine and study, right? I know. That's the only way you get good at it. You got to drink. Yeah. And, you know, I tell people that all the time. My mom's like, you drink too much. I'm like, mom, I'm not drinking. I'm studying. I'm working. (laughs) This is work. (laughs) I love it. So that's that's pretty awesome. So how long have you been in business? Oh, let's say four years, maybe. And the first year was pretty much just getting getting licenses and getting paperwork and trying to find someone to really to to import their wines who would with uh allow us to bring their wines into the state. So that first year was just all paperwork-related. Paperwork and building relationships, I would suppose, right? Yep, that's it. Yeah, But that's prior what... to that, I was just mm-hmm. in school. I uh, I went to – because I didn't know what I want. I knew I didn't want to be in, 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 in service, so I didn't go the, the court route, the court of master sommelier route. It just didn't fit what I was trying to do. I felt – the WSET route was better for me because it was more business-related. And 
I also knew that if I wanted to do something in this industry and take have people take me seriously, that having some sort of accreditation and credentials was going to be necessary. So I also, the year leading up to me getting my uh, start in the business, I, I started taking WSET classes heavily. Right. And so what level are you right now? Uh, I'm currently in a diploma, uh, unit three in a diploma. Oh, nice, nice. Well, good luck to you there. I it's hope it becoming happens a bit, sooner than later. It's a bit tedious, right? Yeah, I was about to say, it's, it's becoming a bit challenging just because it's so time-consuming. And uh, this, this Unit 3 seems to be the biggest and I'm not going to say the hardest, but it's just the most, it encompasses the most, where it encompasses all steel wines of the world. So I'm having a hard time finding time just to, to study and make classes simply because I am still working 60 to 70 hours at my real job. Started right. This, started this wine imported business, which consumes every bit of extra time that I have. So finding time for classes has is, is gotten hard. I think when I studied, that was the hardest thing, too, because I was working a full-time job, plus I was running my business. In addition to that, you know, I have this really bad case of the travel bug so I was traveling all the time <laughs> and so I studied with the North American Sommelier Association and it's super intense and it's a great program but oh my gosh it just takes so much and that's what people don't really realize too and, you know and, and when people don't want to pay the full price for my class I'm like you know what you know how much studying I've done how much I had to pay for this school <laughs> that's not cheap it's not cheap. This life, this this wine life is not cheap at all, but it's it's so rewarding. I love it. it I is. love it. And so speaking, okay, so you have this business. You say you want to do it. You start learning about it, and then you start getting all the business certificates, and then, okay, you, you know, you've pretty much stepped your game by studying with WSET. Um, but was there a particular moment when you said, like, you know, like you, you leveled up on your wine game. Like you said, you know what? I am in this. Like, what was that level up moment when you just said, you know what? I am in this. This is my life because I feel like wine just becomes like it becomes who you are. You know what I mean? Like when people see you, hey, Larry, boom, he imports wine. Like you become this wine person. So when is that moment that you love it? Two separate moments. The first moment is I knew I wanted to do something in wine. I traveled over to Spain with the Philadelphia Wine School. And that's the first time I just, we were, it was, I think, seven days of just in-depth. Yeah. Uh, sampling, tasting, going to vineyards, meeting the winemakers. And I knew right then that I wanted to uh, import wines. There was no doubt this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to travel. I wanted to have an intimate relationship with the winemakers. And, when I got back home, I already knew. That was it. I knew that point because I didn't know what that point in time. I knew I wanted to do something in wine, but I had no clue what it would be, whether it was a bar, teaching classes, import, and I knew I wanted to do something, but that that solidified my choice as to being an importer. And I say the second one is when I got back here and, and we finally started importing wines and we could not find anybody to take our wines and it was an issue because I knew the wines were good. I, they were with bigger distributors in in New York, L.A., uh, Chicago. So they, the wines sold. The wines were great. I just could not get anybody to take me on it. It's probably a combination of being brand new to the industry uh, and and just other issues. But no one would take it take me on. So it forced me to distribute wines myself. Up until that point in time, I had no interest in distributing wines because I knew it would be time-consuming, and I wanted to continue to work in the oil refinery and also slowly build my importing business to have a portfolio in which I thought fit what we were trying to do. But that forced my hand into distribution, and I'm glad it did because I've learned so much between making that decision and, and where I am now. So I said those two are the most important moments in the last few years and, and to the direction in which uh, our little small business has is, is, is gone. Nice. 
So is there any advice that you would give anybody who wants to get into the wine business, whether it's like importing, exporting, distribution, retail, education? Is there any advice that you would give anybody? I tell everybody the same thing. You you, you have to know what you're talking about. So especially if you're a... you just have to know what you're talking about. So I would tell anybody to start taking classes. And it depends on what you want to do. Maybe it's, it is uh, you you aspire to be a master psalm, or maybe you want to go the WSET route. There, there are a whole host of ways you can get accreditations, and but they do help. They force you to learn the material, and it it's what people in the industry look for, and they immediately know that you know what you're talking about. Well, you have those credentials. Uh, some. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish yes. I could do more. I'm telling you, I do, because the wine world is such a, a, a beautiful thing. And it's the more you learn, the more it's out there to learn. So uh, I love it. Yeah, and you know what? You talked about meeting the winemakers and just kind of like geeking out over that whole situation. And that's me. Like, when I go to a tasting room and if the winemaker is there, I could chat with the winemaker. I'm in heaven. I don't need to leave. And that's how I know my heart is in it. Um, are there any particular winemakers that you just really enjoy talking to? And do you feel like because the because you like the winemaker, their wines you're more likely to import or is it just, just good juice, you don't care what the winemaker is like, or is it a combination of the two? Like, yeah, how do you... Great question. And it's one that I often tell people, uh, that the relationship with the winemaker is top-notch with me. It, it is the most important thing. There have been wines that we know of that's absolutely great, but the rapport with the winemaker and me and, and the people in, in our company... It just doesn't work for whatever reason. It, it They're good people, but for some reason, you can see potential clashing of of personalities down the line, and we will walk away from those wines just because we know it won't work. Uh, and there are people that we just fall in love with immediately. Now, there are a couple of people we've fallen in love with, and once we've tasted their wines, we were not no, very not, excited. <laughs> not not very excited, <laughs> and we have walked away from them too, upset because we really like them. So yes, meeting people, and it it just clicks like the guys in South Africa. It just clicks. Uh, also, mm -hmm. Kaylin in South Africa. It immediately once you talk to them, and you, you know it's something there. You taste their wines, you're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's the here. thing. The thing, like Kaylin's that um, Cobb Franc that she makes is, oh my goodness, it just blows me away. And then when you talk to her in person and you hear her story, it's it's pretty amazing. Um, and the first people wines we brought over, that, uh, that I will always look at them. This thing wouldn't happen without Maria and Guy uh, from Soto's Els Angels. They were being courted by some of the biggest. Uh, importers around and they took a chance on us to uh bring their wines in why i'm not i'm still not 100 sure. and so do you still work with them you still bring oh, their yeah. wines in oh yeah nice. that, that's and are, my number one uh we're the number one customer and we're going tomorrow morning we leave for spain for uh, two and a half weeks and they will be the first person we visit once we get there I love it. That's such an amazing story. So, like, it's kind of like you have an extended family with these winemakers. It's not like you're just importing their wines, and then that's where the relationship is. I like that, and that's exactly what it is. We are like a family because uh, she introduced me to a few other people there that we now import, and, <laughs> and they're like the foundation of, of our uh, portfolio. And the people that we have coming in from France now, they're all small family-owned winemakers who are like an extended family because you share experiences. Uh, they all contact you. You'll enjoy each other when you go visit and when they come here. So, yes, it's, it's one of those experiences. That's that's what drew me to important. Uh, I didn't know it would be this rewarding and this fun 
and it has been. It's a lot of hard work, but yeah. there there are a lot of things to love about doing it. Nice. I think it's just about, I love what I love about wine. It's the relationships that you build with people. So not only like, you know, just the winemakers and the distributors and the retail people, but then also like our whole community of people who are like helping each other out, like the people you study with and then the people you, you know, do social media with, all these people. It's just such a tight knit community. It is. Um, Yeah. Are there some people like in this community who like maybe you, look at or admire or maybe you go they're your go to people for advice? Oh, I got a handful of people. Uh people that I go to. Uh initially uh the person that helped me the most is a lady named Deborah Gray. She writes the book How to Import Wine. I oh I also got, has... I bought her book because of you. I was listening to you <laughs> on um Sakari show, and I think you mentioned her, and I was like, let me get this book. Yes, I got she that book. She just uh, updated it. It's the second, uh, like a second edition that just came out, I think, last month to to just take on some of the new things that have, have come about since her last book. Yeah, but she was really changing. instrumental in, in helping me. Like I said, I read a book. It was enough to get me started and enough to get me in trouble. <laughs> so I contacted her, and she helped me immensely in the beginning. They're they're the Max. I call them the, the Max. But uh, Matt McDonald and Andre Mack are both two influential people. <laughs> oh yeah, the Max. Because it's you the, called them that. Because I was like the Max. I was like, oh, but then I was, then I then I finally caught on. Like the Max. The Max are pretty awesome. They are. Uh, I don't know what you can say about Mac McDonald that hasn't already been said, but if you call him, if you email him, if you message him, he is going to give you and lend you any advice he can, and his connections are endless. Uh, yeah, Andrew I... Mac is the same for a guy as busy as he is. If you hit him up, he is going to message you back. It may not be immediately, but he is going to get back in contact with you. These guys will – they. One, they've helped me just understand the business, and two, you just watch what they do and try to emulate some of the things that they're doing, especially uh, Andre Mack on social media. He kills it. Yeah, he's he's (laughs) like a maverick on social media. And, you know, I started my business eight years ago, and both of them since day one have been very supportive. So. I admire both of them, and they're really, they're like, I call I call Mac McDonald Uncle Mac, but he talks to me like I am literally his niece. He's like, baby girl, you need to be more focused on your money. Don't be giving nothing away for free. I love Mac. <laughs> oh, I love him too. Yes. So where did you where did you actually grow up? Like, did you grow up, like, around wine or... You know, or just, I like this question. If you, if you could name a movie that described your childhood, what movie would it be? <laughs> First, just, just tell me that. Let's set the scene. Oh, that's that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Mine, movie. for example, is Boys in the Hood. Like, literally, that was my life. Um, okay. I mean, if, I wasn't a boy, that, but that yeah. That far back, but... That's, I mean, that's, yeah. Let's go with Beat Street. <laughs> oh, yes. I love Beat Street. Okay. I saw that movie about a million times when I was, whew, I guess I was in junior high there. Back when breaking it just hit the scene, and I thought I was a B-boy. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's put that. I, I'd say uh, Beat Street. That, okay. That's, I mean, that's the scene for where I was uh, the formative years of, of Larry Boone. <laughs> Did you have a cherry curl? Oh, no. Oh, oh, my mom would have killed me if I got a cherry curl. She wouldn't let me get one. <laughs> but everybody I knew had one. Uh, no, I was like, man, you were probably the only person that I know that did not have a cherry curl back in the day. I had one. It turned my hair orange. But, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I grew up, I'm from Virginia. I'm from the coastal southeast part of Virginia, the Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Hampton Roads area. Uh, no, wine was not in our house at all. Uh, at that point in time, <laughs> my pops uh, used to have liquor in the house, but wine was not a big part of uh, anything that happened around our household. I mean, wow. outside of some some, <laughs> some 
North Carolina type uh, plum wine or some stuff like that, but nothing, nothing real. Nothing real? Okay. Yeah, that's what I think my mother said her grandmother used to make wine out of fruit and keep it in, like, mason jars, and that yep, was, like, her it. first experience <laughs> with wine. Oh, my God. Larry, it's been so good to talk to you. I have a couple cozy corner questions that I like to ask. So I'm going to ask you these questions, and they're meant to be, like, quick-fire questions, you know, just, like, short-form answers. They don't have to be one word, but they can be. Um, but I'm just going to go through these questions for you. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. When I drink, I get. Oh, man. Uh, when I drink, I get. <laughs> oh. Uh... I don't know. I, I get happy. Okay. Happier. <laughs> Happier, right? That's I get, like, super relaxed. Super happy, like hey. Um, my favorite person to drink wine with is my wife, Doreen. Nice, and she is super gorgeous. I met her last year at the um, Blacklist event. Yes. And I prefer my wine big and bold. Yes, me too. The <laughs> best wine I ever tasted was. Who? Uh. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't there's, know. Uh, there's not one particular wine that you overpaid for or, like, paid a lot of money for because you just fell in love with it. Or... It's a wine, that, and I still don't know what it was. It's the wine that, I like to say, turned me oh, out. That's the wine the I had in Barcelona. Spain. Yeah. And I still... I even revisited that bar when I went back to Spain the second time. The next time I went after it, and it, I don't know, maybe it was just a magical moment because I didn't see anything on a wine list that looked like it. I didn't see any of the food that they served. I wonder if I even went to the same hotel, but that wine there changed my life. What it was, I don't know. So I just know it was a wine from Priorat. Whatever it was, I have no clue. I'm so glad that that wine entered your life. Man. <laughs> All right, given the opportunity, I would travel to where for wine? Uh, Time doesn't matter. Money doesn't matter. Mm. I'm going to say South Africa. I'm going there next year, but that's that's the place right now. It, make, it, it, make sure you ahead. look me up because you know I'll be there. So we have Will to do. go. We have to go wine tasting. We uh, yes, I'll have some more. I'll have some more recommendations for you too. So, yeah. <laughs> Good. South Africa is a great place for wine. If you could give the world a gift, it would be? Oh, crap. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what, what? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if I could give the world a gift, it would be uh, more wine. I love it. Beach, mountain, or forest? Which do you prefer? Beach, mountain, or forest, beach. People don't know that I am you, not me, that you are. Uh, uh, these are tough questions. <laughs> I know. I know. People I don't know some, that. I showed them uh, to Tanisha, and Tanisha was like, well, these are some deep questions. I was like, I know, I'm trying to keep it light, but I really want to know this about people. People don't know that I am. Uh, I don't know. Let's come back to that one. That was a tough one. That's <laughs> that tricky. Was, well, that was kind of like the last one. I mean, there was, there's just this one. There's just one. I mean, I have this favorite quote that I heard on this one podcast that I listened to, and it said, do it for the people who believe in you. That's like absolutely my favorite quote because it gets me going when, you know, sometimes I feel like I can't. Is yeah. there, who, who are the people that believe in you? Like, who are you doing this for? Oh, my Besides family. Besides yourself. Uh, Your family, yes. My wife, uh, my daughters, uh, they're the ones I'm doing it for right now. So this is one of those things that if you look at any distributor, most distributors, most of the major distributors, you have a few up-and-coming distributors now. But most distributors and import houses in America are 
third, fourth, fifth generation nice. entities. So it's not like they were just built. And that's why sometimes they're hard to to displace because they have such an infrastructure already set up. And that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, we're a first-generation entity right now, but it's something that I want to leave my daughters in a position that they can take it to the next step and they can hand it on to their kids and take it to the next step. So, I love uh, it. It's, it's I a love work it. in process. I love it because it's a legacy that you don't normally see in our community. You know what I mean? Like, you mm-hmm. know, like you have the beauty shop and there's not, I'm, I'm not knocking that kind of stuff at all, but I love it that, you know, you're stepping outside of the box and you're thinking about your future and recycling, you know, the wealth into your own family. That's pretty awesome. It's the plan. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, so how can people find you? So if somebody has a wine that they want to distribute, because hopefully people are listening to this podcast all over the world. That's what I'm going to put in the universe. <laughs> and if they're making a wine and they want to get their wine to you to sample or if they want to get in contact with you, how can people get in contact with you? I'm very easily accessible. You can Message me on social media, uh, Instagram, at Boom Selection. Same thing on uh, Facebook. So that's uh, Boom with the E, B-O-O-N-E. N-E Selections with the S. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, I do oh, my God, you're on YouTube? I got to check you out on YouTube. Whoa, 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 whoa. hey, YouTube? hey, that, it, that's in its <laughs> infancy stages. That's like... Just giving birth to what we're doing there. So it's not much content there yet. But we hope that uh, we'll start adding more, especially uh, after our trip. Uh, we, I'm setting up to have more uh, material. But, yeah, you more can content. find me there. Uh, on each of those sites, there's an email address. Email me. Uh, call me. If you do any of that, I will get back to you. I, I, I love the interaction. I love it. I'm already stalking you on all of those platforms except for YouTube, and I will add that to the stalking list right now, and I will make sure that I put all of your contact information in the show notes. And it was so amazing talking to you. I'm super excited. I can't wait to spend time with you in South Africa. Oh, I can't either. I, oof, that is something I'm really – That, and I know you got to go, but I had no intent, and this is no lie, never intended on bringing in wives from South Africa, ever. It was not on my list because it was going to be just Spain, but then we got access to some stuff from France that interests me. Then we got access to some other stuff from France. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe we should expand it, but Europe would be enough. We're just trying to figure out what the hell's going on here in Europe and how we can get wines back. And then just out of the blue, I was reading, I believe it was, uh, it may have been CNBC Africa or, or Forbes Africa and Joseph's story about the Zim Psalms, and uh, yeah. it, I, I read that, and it piqued my interest. So then I went into straight research mode, and I love everything about what I read and about him. So I just contacted him. I hit him up on uh, Facebook, and he answered me immediately. I mean, immediately. Yeah, and me and him began talking, and I think I messaged you not to uh, that same day, and you're like, I haven't tasted his wines, but if I hear something, I'll let you know. So uh, I I go through a process because most of the processes that I use, I could not use with them because normally I would go to visit them, talk to them, uh, then just check to see. There's a couple importers across the world that if a name falls on, it interests me, but if they fall on three or four of the importers that I really take interest in, then I'm really interested. Normally those wines we can't get. But I saw his name on one of them. So I was I was very intrigued. I thought the story was gr- insane. So uh, we decided we'd bring him on. And he only made a small amount of wines. But bringing one wine from a small producer in South Africa just didn't make sense uh, yeah. <laughs> logistically. So that's when I went looking for another person. And as I was researching... Uh, that's when I came across uh, Kamusha and, and, and Tanash, and I think I, then I know I contacted you, and you're like, Larry, you got to get him. If you yeah. can get him, get him. And then I, I called him, and the same thing. Immediately he hit me back, and we had a great 
rapport. So I'm like, you know what? I have two winemakers. I need one more. And do my research, I found Kaylin. And I liked everything I saw about what she was doing. And lo and behold, guess who is in her picture again? You. <laughs> <laughs> and I hit you up again and said, hey, what do you think? Because I, I had to use that. I needed one more winemaker, and being that I was not a South African, I wasn't in in the know there. I had yeah. to lean on people that I knew, and I trusted their talents to. Uh, to yeah, and I'm and I'm glad I didn't let you down. I mean, I thought. Oh like, yeah, I t- you know her wines and 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 and. And Tanache's wine. Yes, and uh, I haven't absolutely tasted, I haven't insane. tasted Joseph's yet, but Tanache's red wine blend, it's amazing. And I love it because it's different, right? So he does the Cabernet, and then he does Tinsult, which is is an amazing combination that a lot of people don't usually we do. We can't get the red. Oh, you can't get the red? He's all sold out. Oh, So we, wow. we will get it, but it'll be next year. Uh, this year, uh, we're just bringing in the uh, the white blend. The white, Okay. And cool. uh, Kaylin's, we're bringing in both. We're bringing in her Cal Franc and a Simeon. And Joseph, we're just bringing in his, I really wanted his Chenin Blanc, but he sold out. So we're just bringing in the Syrah. And next year, we're just going to order everything we can, right? We're going to get first dips on it. So we're going to bring in a lot more. But this year, because I came in the game so late, uh, a lot of it had already been sold. And I think it's great because they, I mean, it's amazing how much other people admire America across the globe. And so for them to have their wines in America, for them, it's a really big deal, you know? I mean, for us, it's a big deal to have their wines here. But for them, it's a really big deal to be like, yo, my wine's in America. Yeah, I I, I could imagine. And yeah. those dudes, uh, they're doing big things. So uh, Oh, my God, they're telling. doing amazing things. I All can't wait to have them on my show. All three of those people I'm bringing over are going to be absolute superstars in their own right for very different reasons, but they are big, they are going to be big time. And you know, I like them because they're all young and absolutely they have a, a I love it because about, they're all like passionate about yes. business and they're all thinking outside the box. You know what I mean? And I feel like. No, it's not even in their vocabulary. Like, you nope. know, you can't, it's not even in their vocabulary. And that's the most amazing thing to me. Like, and you can sit there. There are people that you can sit down with, drink their wines, talk to them all day, and just walk away feeling like it's so great, you know? <laughs> even buy their <laughs> wines, spend way too much money because you spend everything you had on their wines and be like, yeah, I did a good job. I did a good thing for society. Yep. So, yeah, they, they're pretty awesome. I can't wait to all of us have dinner when you're in South Africa. Whoop, whoop, man. That's the plan. I yes, that is the plan. You know the, uh, the travel plans when we put them together. I didn't realize that flight was as long, so that's sort of – I wanted to go there in, like, February and March, but how long is that flight? Like 18 hours or something? Mm. Oh, please. It's 26 hours, bro. <laughs> so, but the thing about it is it's like you can make two vacations out of one. So, like, I either fly Emirates or I fly Turkish Airways. I like flying Turkish Airways. It's a super nice airline. And you get to stay in Turkey for, like, 8 to 10 hours. So it's like you kind of get a whole day in Turkey. And Turkey is a beautiful city. Did you and get to leave the airport there? Yeah, you get to leave the airport. There's a, oh. um, I have a contact. I can give you a driver. He can pick you up from the the airport, take you on like a little tour, just hang out with you all day. And it's relatively inexpensive. It was like $150 for him to take me into the city um, for six hours. And then and once you get there, it's an expensive turkey. And then you can also, and then you stay there for like 10 hours and then you get back on the plane and you finish your journey another 13 hours to South Africa. Or you can fly Emirates. And Emirates is great because even their coach is like first class. I sound like a commercial right now. Emirates, pay, <laughs> pay me my money. You got it. Pay me. But so you get the same thing. You get that 10, 12-hour layover, and then you get to go see Dubai. But, you know, you got to bring your change. Make sure you bring a bag because, you know, you don't pay in Dubai. But still, even if you do something that's relatively inexpensive, like go to the mall, like, you know, I'm on a budget. So, like, I've been – when I've stopped in um, Dubai, I've been to the mall, and the mall is huge. It's like a city. They have a grocery store. They have, I think, they have a car dealership in the mall. It's like wow. huge. Um, they have a ski lodge in the in the mall. <laughs> so, 
so <laughs> you can do that, or you can take the most the most like expedious trip, and you can fly through Amsterdam. So you fly from DC and you stop in Amsterdam for one hour, and then you get back on and then do another thirteen hours. God. So <laughs> I like the long layover because then it's like you know. I, it breaks up the trip. It, um, it breaks up the trip. And I'm just not as young as I used to. Flying 26 hours straight, I don't think that would work for me. Yeah, that's that's what sort of turned me off the whole trip. I'm like, God. But once you get it. there, once you get there, oh, my God, it's so worth it. It's so beautiful. Like, you have you ever been to, like, Africa? No, yeah, that would be the first time I go. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, when I stepped off that plane, even now, just talking about it, I get chills. As soon as I stepped off the plane, I just felt emotions, like all these emotions. Like, I felt like, honestly, I felt like my ancestors were tapping me on the shoulder saying, welcome home, wow. baby girl. Welcome home. So that's the uh, reason you're going back? That's the reason I'm going back. Plus, the, my people are out there. Like, all my wine people are out there. <laughs> like... I mean, it's amazing to go, like, because you know how it is in the United States. Now I'm about to get very political, and I apologize, but I have to tell my perspective of being in the wine business. Um, we go to these wine events, and usually we're like one of five, maybe, right? Sometimes yeah. we're the only one. And um, when you go to South Africa, every a lot of people in the wine business, they look like us, you know? So they're, really? they're, they're black people. They're black psalms. Like, Tanache is the... Ted Som, he's the director for the wine and spirits program at the number, it's number 50 now, it used to be number 26 restaurant in the world. Like, how amazing is that? You know, he's Crazy. the Som at the number 50 restaurant in the entire world. Um, yeah. You know, you go to the one and only, the one and only is like one of the top five hotels in South Africa. And this head Som there, Luvo, he's black, you know. There's, like, so many people who are, like, just doing it in the wine industry who look like us. You go to the wineries, and most of the assistant winemakers are black, and we know the assistant winemakers are the ones who are really making the wine. Come on, y'all. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but, so yeah. So you're going back for good, huh? I mean, I mean, not for good for good, but, like, for for a long time. I mean, not unless I find a husband there and I get married. <laughs> oh, <you> yeah. <laughs> I will put that in the universe, too. I'll take that as well. But, no, honestly, I'm going there. I'm committing to at least one year. And then with this abroad drinking wine um, platform, what I want to do is go to a different country every year. So I'm putting it out in the universe that my next country will be Croatia, either Croatia or Spain, somewhere in Spain. Either um, one of those are top-notch. Yeah, I got invited to work Harvest this past year in both um, in Spain and in Croatia. I didn't go because I had to work so I could save up for my South Africa move. But right. um, I think I'm going to either go to Croatia or Spain and work Harvest. So Cool. Yeah. I like. Yeah. I so like I, a lot. I, I, it was such a pleasure to talk to you. It was. Is you there anything? What, no, what were you going to say? I was going to say, is there anything else you want the people to know about you? Ah, no, this wine game is fun. It's a lot of drinking, but it's a lot of hard work. So uh, <laughs> if you're not passionate about it, this may not be the business for you. Yeah. It is very, very time-consuming with the classes, the certifications, the work behind the scenes. A lot of people see people out doing wine tastings and doing these wine mm -hmm. dinners and think, that's all the wine industry is, and that's probably only 1% of it. The rest of it is insane amounts of dedication, hard work, whether it's in the fields, uh, making the wines or studying. distributing, you know, studying, serving them. So, uh, yes, it's a great industry to be in, but do your homework if you're going to try to change jobs and take this on as a full-time gig. Uh, know what you're getting into. And if you just like drinking, and if you go to a country and you taste the wine from a small producer, you know what? Just hit Larry up on Instagram, take a picture of the bottle, and tell him maybe he should bring it to the United States. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yes. do that. Do, do that. Say it. Do that. <laughs> I, you know what? I have all kind of great business ideas. But, yeah, do that. That's, that's the best way you can help him out if you are on the consuming side. If you're a consumer, because, you know, trust me, I like to consume wine, too. So for us consuming wine, 
if we see a wine in a foreign country that we like, take a picture of it, you know, and, and send it to them. Don't be and taking we'll a be picture of it. every, yeah, don't take a picture of Behringer and say you need to bring this to the United States. That's already in Ralph's. Go to your grocery <laughs> store. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time out to uh, talk to me about my little itty-bitty baby business. Oh, gosh, thank you so much. I mean, I love the knowledge. I love the support. Um, I'm super excited for you. And anything that I can do, trust me, I'm here for you. I'm oh, here for you, bro. Done, you've done a million things for me already. <laughs> Whatever I can do for you, let me know. All righty. I love it. The love fest is on. Free <laughs> hugs for everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, Larry. Have a good hey, day. You too. And I'll definitely keep track of what's going on in, in your world. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. What an amazing show. So much fun talking to Larry Boone all the way from the East Coast. I'm so happy that he's importing South African wines into the United States. Make sure you look out for some of the brands that he mentioned. Um, I'll have a link to him in the show notes. And then what about my mother? Wasn't she awesome? Oh my goodness, it was great to have her on the show as well. And then thank you so much to my uncle, Bishop Tom Watson, for sending me off with lots of love and lots of prayer. Off to South Africa, y'all. Next time you hear from me, I'll be in South Africa, Cape Town.